Namaste everyone, whether you are um, a student of mine or a new friend that I haven't met. I am um, here for you today to help settle the mind, settle the body um, and the spirit uh, for sleep specifically. I have been having crazy insomnia since this whole quarantine has been going on. And even before, um, as a mom, I have had some insomnia with that as well. So I'm um, here today to offer up some things that have been helpful for me. And um, you know, if it works for you, great. If it feels like this is not helpful, leave it. So that's my general um, recommendation. So to begin, we're gonna lie on our back and you're going to need a blanket. So. These props that I have, you can totally find in your own home. Um, the firmer the blanket, the better. So if it's too kind of squishy, you won't get the, the feedback from the back uh, from the blanket that you need. So you're gonna put your blanket somewhat folded in an organized way towards the top of your mat. And you're gonna come to sit down with your feet on the floor and lay your head back onto that blanket. So the goal here is that the head is supported by the blanket, but the shoulders are off of the blanket. And you're just gonna take a few moments with your eyes closed to open up your palms. If this is at all uncomfortable for your lower back, you may widen the distance between your feet and knock your knees in towards each other. And just here with the eyes closed, begin to give in to the heaviness of your head, specifically the back of the skull. So you can take every inhale, breathe into the belly, into the rib cage and chest, expanding. And every exhale allows the body to move down, the head moves down into the support of the blanket, the shoulders move down into the mat, and even the lower back moves down towards the floor. So often in our day-to-day -day life, there is a forward moving energy through our eyes. So here, you're just taking these first few moments in our practice to allow the eyes to move down and back into the skull, to allow the jaw to soften. And taking a few breaths here in and out of your nostrils. And on your next breath in, see if you can fill completely up. But then as you exhale, open up your lips and create a little circle through your lips. And exhale through that circling of your lips. Inhale through your nose. And exhale into that circling of your lips as you're pushing a pedal up, up, up into the sky. One more like that, inhaling through the nose. And that long, continuous exhale through the lips. And then closing the lips, inhale and exhale through your nose. So as you're here, just bring into that sense, that muscle memory that you could continue to release the shoulder blades down and the head down. But begin to rub the palms of your hands together with some energy, with some vigor, until you feel that the hands are a little warmed by this rubbing. And then you're going to take the heels of the hands right to the eye sockets and lightly press down. As you do this, releasing the shoulders down and even the jaw, releasing your neck and continuing to breathe. And then coming back to that rubbing of your hands together, 
This time, once you feel the little spark there in between your hands, you may take your hands to the back of your neck and grab the back of the skull, right at the occiput, at the occipital ridge of the back of the skull. And you'll just turn the right cheek to the blanket, releasing your head down, releasing your arms down. As you're here, just again, inhaling and exhaling through the nose, creating Sama Vritti, so that the inhale and the exhale are the same duration. Imagining the left collarbone getting longer as you heavy the left shoulder blade down. And then bringing your hands to the back of your head again, right up that occipital ridge, the back of the skull. You can take that release this time of your left ear towards the blanket. Releasing your arms again down by your sides. As the left ear continues to release into the blanket, you're allowing now your right collarbone to broaden, the right arm relaxed, the right fingers relaxed. And from here, taking your hands again behind your head, Slowly release your head back down to the blanket. Now here, with this blanket behind your head, you may observe the tendency to even lift the chin up towards the ceiling, or to jam the chin way down towards the throat. And we're trying to kind of meet the middle of those two efforts, so that the neck is long, and the chin is parallel to the chest. So you can create that. Now this time, you're going to stamp your feet into the mat, and you'll take again, now your hands behind the right thigh. So with that interlacing of your hands, behind the right thigh, continue to release your head down, release your shoulders down. So instead of viewing this practice as being something we're trying to actively pursue, we're just allowing it to move through us. There's always an invitation to go deeper, but going deeper with breath, going deeper with letting go. So here you're just allowing the weightedness of the right hip to drop down into that, to the floor, the right thigh bone drop into the hip socket there. And then from there, to go deeper, you may extend your left leg long on the floor, if that feels available. If it doesn't, if it quickly tells you that's too much, bring your left foot back to the floor, not a problem. If extending the left leg long means the shoulders have lifted up off of the floor, take that left foot back, no problem. Now from here, all that's gonna begin to change is that you're gonna press the hamstrings of the back of the right thigh into the hands, so that there's a little bit more of a point of contact there. And with a little bend or a deep bend into the right knee, begin to play with extending that right leg long. So again, if the shoulders lift off of the floor, you know you've gone too far. Our objective here is to release the back body down, so the back of the skull, and the shoulders are releasing. If extending that right leg up has lifted your chin again towards the ceiling, slowly release it back down. Find your center. And then breathing in here and breathing out. Continue that heaving of the right thigh bone down into the body while you reach up through the ball of your right foot. Notice when you stop breathing, when the mind sort of takes over, and just invite yourself back again and again and again. 
from here. We bend your right knee. Take your two knees into the chest. And circle the knees around and around in a clockwise direction. As the knees move in towards your chest, you're working your middle back. As the knees move back away from your chest, you're working more your lower back. So you may feel that you're targeting this circling towards any spots of sensation for you. And then your knees come back through center. And then release your feet back to the floor. From here, take your hands, bring them behind the belly of the left thigh. So that still the shoulders are on the floor, still your jaws at ease, still the back of the neck is long. Your closest teacher here is your breath. So you're allowing the inhale to meet the sensation that might be there for you, and the exhale to release, to let go of any tension that might be there in the body. From here, if you want to go deeper, you may extend your right leg long. Again, if that feels too much for your lower back, then just plant that right foot right back to the mat. That's not a problem. With that right leg extended, imagine that you're stepping on the ground. The inner right knee drops, the inner right heel and outer right heel reach forward. And then staying here, see if you can begin to press the back of the left thigh, the hamstrings, into the hands, and begin to play with extending that left leg up into a longer left leg. For many of us, to accomplish this, we need to keep the knee bent, that left knee bent, so that the shoulders can stay on the ground. But if it feels available, you may begin to lengthen that left leg with the shoulder still on the ground. Imagining the blood from the left leg traveling down all the way back towards your heart. Feeling that as you're extending that left leg long, still the thigh bone is dropping into the hip socket. And then slowly re-bend the left knee, take your two knees into the chest. And this time you're going to circle to the left. So circling the knees around in a clockwise direction, counterclockwise rather, so that you're finding that you can just massage the sacrum, massaging the lower back as you take this circling. And then the next time the knees veer through center, pause. And take a little rock forward and back till you come all the way up to sit. Now from here, we're going to find a seated shape that's comfortable for you. So you may use a blanket, I often do, or a pillow underneath your hips. The main objective is to have your knee points below your hip points. So if you find that when you're seated, and your knees are really high, that you may, you may need to prop yourself up a little bit. And then with your two sitting bones um, right there on the blanket, or right on the mat, if that may be the case, see if you can just take a moment to rest your hands onto your thighs and close your eyes. Feel that you can lengthen the sides of your waist up from your outer hips to your two armpits. And with that height that you're creating in the sides of your waist, see if you can equally release your shoulders down, away from your ears, further towards uh, the midline of your back. And then just as we're here, you may feel that little muscle memory of where that blanket was not long ago behind your head. And imagine that you can take the back of the skull back like you're in a great big throne 
and the back of the skull is moving into the throne while you keep shoulder blades plugged into the back. The belly is uh, supporting the length of your spine. And then on your inhale, circle your arms up into the sky. As you exhale, bring your hands together into your heart, into a namaste. And we'll take two more like that. So the inhale reaches your arms up. And the exhale gathers your hands into the heart. Last one. To inhale, breathing the arms high. And the exhale to gather the hands into the heart. Now from here, inhale, reach your arms up. This time take your left hand, bring it between the two shoulder blades on the back, and bring your right hand to that left elbow high. Now I have my eyes closed, but obviously you're watching the video, so you may open them and then close them as needed. The objective here is to move your senses, which are often drawn outwards, inwards, by just closing the gates of the eyes, closing your awareness, bringing it into this atmosphere of yoga, where we're just following the breath moment by moment. Now, same sensation here. Take the back of the head into that left forearm and continue that Lift to the sides of the waist. One more full inhale. And then as you exhale, take your right hand down to the mat on the right side of your body. So notice that my right arm is still long. I haven't sort of collapsed here. Still you're working your right shoulder away from your right ear. Your right arm is long. And begin to side bend. So as you do, see if you can crawl your fingertips of your right arm out further and further and further out to the right while maintaining that same steady breath, that groundingness of that left hip down. That's it. The last part is to extend left arm over your head into a great big side bend. And then inhale, two arms to the sky, reach up as you exhale, easy twist to the right. So your right hand can come to the floor behind you. Left hand to the outer right thigh or knee, and you'll just gaze past your right shoulder or somewhere over to the right. Still bringing in that awareness to the back of the skull, even here, that you're not trying to jam yourself further into the pose by aiming your chin forward, but still finding that column of support through your spine and the back of the skull moving slightly back so that you're drawing yourself back in, drawing the mind back in and softening. Find that you can inhale a little longer and exhale into the depth of your twist. That's it. And then coming back through center, releasing your hands to your thighs. Let's take that again. So inhale, arms up. Exhaling, hands into a namaste at your heart. Two more. Inhaling, clearing the air around you, the space around you for sleep. Exhaling, hands into the heart. Last one. Inhaling, the arms up. And exhaling, the hands into the heart. And then inhaling, the arms up. This time, you'll bend your right elbow, bring your left hand to that right elbow. The tendency here is to throw your front ribs forward and see if you can call those front ribs back into the body. Take the back of the skull back. Breathing into the circumference of your rib cage and then calling the breath out bit by bit. Take another full inhale here. And a full exhale. And then slowly here, you're going to take left hand out to the side, coming to fingertips. Again, the left arm remains long as you begin to reach, 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 reach out to the left, planting your right hip point down. 
the gaze is very much TBD. So with the eyes, it has a sort of, it may have the quality of making you more active than you need to be. Sight may actually lead to more thinking or more of the tendency that leads to sleeplessness. It may be that closing the eyes or having the gaze be a little softer might help you here. And the last part is to extend that right arm away from the right hip, calling that right shoulder back into the body. That's it. Inhale, reaching back upright as you exhale, twisting to the left. Left hand behind you to a block, a book, your kid's toy, <laughs> whatever you have around you. Gazing past the left shoulder or somewhere to the left again. There's nothing right now that you have to fix. You can just feel the sensations as they come and they go. Breathe into the sensations, preparing the body, the mind, the spirit for sleep. And then when you're ready, coming back through center, release your hands to your thighs. Okay, very well. Now, come off of your blanket, and we're going to just take a little bit of uh, free movement. I would like you to just really focus on your breath, and you can take as much time as you need to move between these points. So if you want to stop the video at any point and go, Oh, this feels good. I want to stay here a little bit longer. Absolutely do that. So we're going to start in all fours. And you're going to inhale and lift the gaze. Again, eyes can be open or closed. Tailbone lifts. And as you exhale, you're going to round your way into child's pose with your shins parallel. And then from here, you'll press through the tops of the feet, the toenails, the shins, to round your way up into all fours, arching the spine. And the exhale will round you. There's a drive of the tailbone down as you begin to round your way back in the child's pose, releasing your forehead down towards the mat. And then the inhale lifts you back up. Arching the spine, sitting bones, broaden as the chest expands, and then you'll exhale, and again, round your way into child's pose. I was thinking as I was doing this today, of this is a great opportunity to think of everything on your to-do list. And then as you exhale and round your way into child's pose, you can say, I will hang out with that tomorrow. Right. Now is not a time for that. I will let that go. And maybe there's that email you just can't stop thinking about writing your boss or whoever. And you can say, okay, that is an activity I will do tomorrow. Or maybe it's how am I going to feed my family? How will we get through this? And exhale, I just for the moment feeling nourished and held in this environment. And you can take this as many times as you want. Also, if your forehead doesn't come to the ground, you're always welcome to use a block so that the earth can meet you. So that as you come back, you can release your forehead to a block instead of the floor. So that you're really giving your, your forehead, the third eye, that opportunity to release down. And you may take even a moment of just going side to side with your head, the forehead releasing. And from here, we'll lift up all fours. The first option is to take puppy dog. So notice that we're staying pretty close to the ground. <laughs> so if you're like, I want to stay really close to the ground right now, if I have already had a few nights of sleeplessness and I don't want to get to lift it right now, keep yourself close to the ground. So the first option is puppy dog, and it's with arms long. You're going to take them about 6 to 12 inches forward from your all fours, and begin with your knees right there below your hip points 
to release your forehead down to the block. So the height of the block is very much TBD. You could heighten it, lower it. If you don't have a block stack, you can books. The good hard cover ones. And you'll begin to release your forehead towards something. So that you're here along with the arms, inner elbows lifted, gathering your upper arm bones and shoulder blades into the back. Belly's gathering in. If you feel that you want to graduate that into a downward facing dog, you'll take the block onto the higher setting and find that spread of the fingers wide and press the palms down to begin now to release your forehead into the block. You can adjust the stepping on your feet or even the bend of the knees might really help here to release the hamstrings. And then here you're just going again from side to side on your forehead, releasing the forehead into the block. Just feeling very much contained here. This is your exploration of sensation, of breath, to show up for caring for yourself. And then you can stay in this shape, which is already an inversion, as long as you would like. Playing with length into the legs, heels melting down, keeping that bend into the knees, hips lifted. When you're ready, beginning to release down. The knees to the floor, and then sitting onto your hips with your heels. Okay, now from here we're gonna take just a round of Chandra Namaskar, which is moon salutations. So we do a lot of Surya Namaskar in our regular sort of active practice, but here, the purpose is a little different. Here we're trying to cultivate the atmosphere of rest and of ease. So thinking of the moon as the great sort of feminine force, the cooling energy that we need as a sort of counterpose for our solar energy, which we often have going on in the daytime. So we're gonna start, you may wanna block here. And we're gonna start at the top of the mat. So feet are hip width apart, and then you're going to inhale, circle the arms up into the sky so that the palms touch, and exhale the hands together back into the heart. Just like we've been doing, you'll inhale, reach the arms up, and exhale and gather the hands together. Last one like that, inhaling the arms up. But this time, as you exhale, take the prayer through the midline of the body. So you're coming down with a flat back, eventually forward folding. Now here, you may have a pretty deep bend into the knees. You definitely want to release your arms and your head down. So any little movements that will bring that to you, you can take hold of opposite elbows. And then see if you can inhale and slide those hands now up to the shins, lengthening out your spine. So sides of the waist are really long, chest moving forward. And as you exhale, you'll release again down. And then this time you're going to step your right leg back and behind you into a lunge. Lower the right knee to the floor. Keep your right toes tucked under. And then bring your hands right up to that left thigh. So as you lift your hands up to the left thigh, you're slowing down your tendency to want to get somewhere really fast. You're taking just a few extra moments here to dig that left heel into the mat, steering your left hip back. And then when all that feels settled, right, when you can find the breath again, then you'll reach your arms up into the sky. Bend to the right elbow and take your left hand to the right elbow. So all over again, you're just finding that lift of the belly, the head moving slightly back to open up into a back bend. It doesn't have to be the back, biggest back bend of the day, right? It can be just what it is here, opening and lengthening the front body. 
and then reach your two arms up. As you exhale, take your hands down to the mat. Now this may be the opportunity to use a block or a book or whatever you're using underneath your right hand so that your palm is pressing into that strongly. Your right arm is long. You'll take your left hand to the left thigh and turn the torso from right to left. Gradually, you may add a lift of the left arm to the sky or even a bend into that left elbow, taking your left hand behind the head. If it feels like you've got room to keep going, you may lift and broaden that back of the right knee to lift the right thigh up away from the floor. One more breath here. And then slowly release two hands down to the mat and find your way back into downward facing dog or puppy dog. Now, inhale, trace it forward into plank pose and then you're going to lower to the mat. So for some of us, it may be knees first and then you'll take the upper body down or lowering in one line. Now, once you get to the floor, untuck your toes, take your hands behind your head, lengthen out your legs, and then you're gonna lift the elbows from the floor. As you're ready, gather your shoulder blades into the back, lift the upper body from the floor. The forehead is lifted, you're using the strength of the back instead of the jamming of the chin forward to go and find some air there. One more breath in this modified cobra and then hands to the mat, find child's pose. Knees now quite wide, big toes touch, forehead melts down again towards the ground. This may be a great opportunity to flip up the palms so that you're even offering away what you can, the problem you can't solve tonight. Uh, you can offer away all of that sort of excess of, um, you know, effort, the wanting to find the right solution to whatever it is that's kind of keeping you up. Or maybe it's just a situation, a relationship, whatever it is that needs a little bit of awareness and you can just offer it away. So you're just flipping your palms up as this gesture of, I'm creating space to let go right now. I'm creating space to breathe in and out. Again, you can stay in your child's pose as long as you would like, but when you're ready, we'll all find down dog or puppy dog. And then you'll take just a little walking of your feet towards your hands to the top of the mat. Find a half lift. And then folding back in. That's it. Inhale, reaching your arms all the way up into the sky, lifting up the prayer over your head and bringing your hands back into the heart. Now releasing your arms by your sides, just taking a few moments to close your eyes and breathe. Observing as you're practicing what you're practicing, how you're practicing. This is very important. The quality of our mind while we're practicing is what we're practicing. So we're just again and again and again trying to bring about this atmosphere of relaxation and letting go for this moment, for this task of sleeping. When you're ready, you'll inhale the arms up. Exhale, prayer lands in your heart. And then the in-breath lifts the arms over your head. And the exhale, hands land again. As you inhale, you're creating this bhavanam, this atmosphere of yoga. As you exhale, bring yourself into the forward fold. So a long spine takes you down, all the way down there. Again, find your half lift. 
Hands can slide up to the shins and land somewhere out and in front of you. And exhale to release down. Any little moments you want to have in the forward fold, please do. You can bend one knee after the other, whatever is going to feel nourishing for you. When you're ready, you'll step your left foot back, lower your left knee to the ground, keeping your left toes tucked under. And then just observing what is it that takes you from one point to the next. Can it be the breath? So that as you inhale, you'll take your hands up to your right thigh, and that's what leads you up. Instead of this obligation or feeling like this drudgery, like you have to do this or that, it's the breath that's actually moving you, empowering you here. And as you're here, you're moving your pelvis forward towards the right heel. While the pelvis moves forward, you're tacking that right hip back. From there, inhale, two arms to the sky. Bend the left elbow, left hand comes between the shoulder blades, right hand to your left elbow. All over again, go for height into the length of the spine, and that little back bend deepens by releasing the back of the skull again towards the left forearm. Lifting your chest. When you're ready, find one more breath in and one more breath out. From here, inhale, two arms up, slowly releasing hands back down to the mat as you breathe out. Now this time, you can take right hand to the right thigh, turning the torso from left to right. Or again, bringing your left hand to a block. Any height that's going to work for you. Or a can of tomatoes. I mean, whatever you're using for your block, I would like to know. Now from there, you may lift the right arm to the sky. You may bend into the right elbow, bringing your right hand behind your head. Or play with even broadening the back of that left knee up as you revolve around the midline of your body, over and over, right ribs back, left, sideways to reaching forward. Energize the reach of that back left leg. One more breath here, tapping the right hip point back, and then slowly releasing right hand down, find downward facing dog. Now from here, we're going to find a, just a moment of a seated shape. So again, you can sit up on your blanket. If it's nighttime, I could say blankie. <laughs> Sit up on your leg, and you're going to find just a crossing of your legs is comfortable for you. Releasing your hands to your thighs, eyes closed. Just observe the quality of your breath now, the quality of your mind. Observe if there's any more space for relaxation than from the beginning of the practice. We're going to take a pranayama now called Chandra Vedana, or moon um, breath. So you're going to create Mirga Mudra, which is a deer mudra, so that your thumb of your right hand and your, index, uh, and your pinky are moving away from each other and the other three fingers of your right hand aim in. So like the deer antlers, deer's antlers. And you'll just close your eyes. Anytime we take our breathing practices, or pranayama, we want to start in neutral. Easier said than done. <laughs> so the first thing you can do is line up shoulders over your hips. Again, your chin is jamming forward in sort of your chest, neck. But you're aiming your chin parallel to the chest. Four corners of the neck are long with the top of the head towards the sky. And just find that you can breathe here a few moments, in through the nose and out. Now on your next inhale, plug up with your right thumb, your right nostril, and inhale through the left nostril. At the top of the breath in, exhale down through the right nostril, bringing your pinky to that left nostril and breathe out. 
and then plug up with the right thumb, inhale left, and exhale right, inhale left, exhale right. We're inviting, inhale left, the cool energy of the moon, exhale right. To move through the nadis of your body. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale left. Release your right hand down, keeping your eyes closed. And observing this effect that the breath has had on your energy. With all of the breathing practice this week, be a great springboard for you to pause the video and take a longer meditation. But we're going to move on so you can open up your eyes and find that you can move your blanket over to the side. A few more steps here. So we're going to take the, blank, the block now and a strap. So I've <laughs> Use bathrobe straps in my house. I have a strap as well, but you know, use what you've got. Scarves, you could find, you know, something. Rope, I don't know what you have in your house, but um, for a belt. And a block, or books, whatever you've got. And from here, you're gonna come to lying on your mat again. And you're going to take the block down underneath your lower back. So I'm going to advise that it's on the lower height or the medium height, and not the high height here, because we're going to take a variation. So you're going to press down through your feet to lift that block, to lift the hips, and then slide that block underneath your lower back. So that you're really not so much at that sort of curve of the lower back, but actually quite low, down by the top of the buttock flesh and tailbone. So if, you know, if you can go there, a little lower is that in here. And then you're going to just pause again to remember the sensation of releasing the back of the head down. Here you can even release the front of the throat down and even the shoulders down. And this may feel like where you want to stay. Just releasing into bridge pose, supported. Or you may begin to take your hands behind the right thigh. So again, just how we started. If that feels too far away, you can always use your belt, bath, rope, <laughs> rope, dental floss, whatever you're using for your belt. And you can begin to extend that right leg it's long. So if it's hands behind the thigh, eventually you can lengthen out that leg, or use your belt. 
The objective here is still the shoulders are on the floor, still the back of the skull is dropping. Arms are long, so you're not trying to like uh, pull the leg in, none of that. You're just landing and sinking the upper arm bones into the floor, into the shoulder sockets, shoulder blades dropping, jaw is soft. And then if it feels appropriate, you may take your left leg long. Thinking of reaching through the inner and outer left heel. A little flex into that left foot. And then here you're just breathing. Letting the eyes deepen into the skull. So there's this feeling that still you have the heels of your hands are on your eyeballs, that you're releasing the weightedness of the eyes down. Releasing the weight of the world from your shoulders. And just connecting again the breaths in and out through the nostrils. And then you can stay here as long as you would love or begin to bend your right knee, plant the right foot on the floor, and left foot on the floor. So do come through center. Just a moment to pause, integrate. And we'll take our second side. So again, hands may come behind the belly of the left thigh, with the left heel in towards the left sitting bone to extend that left leg along, or use your belt if you'd like to. And then from here, you're all over again, giving into the weightedness of the back of the skull, giving into the weightedness of the upper back, moving down, and the shoulders moving down. The tongue even that wants to like, sort of move around, your mouth is just releasing towards the bottom jaw. And then you can stay there with the right foot to the floor or begin to extend it out nice and long. This is the hamstring for me that is super speaking to me right now. So I'm using my breath to speak hamstring. I'm taking my breath right there to the sensation of my left hamstring's lengthening. And then I'm softening as much as I can that left hip down into the support of the block. Allowing my time and shape to take me deeper without force. Working for you, 
the second option is yours. So I'm going to show this. This is something I learned from the great teacher Sean Halim, um, and it has helped me. I was having insomnia that led to dizziness, um, and I did this pose specifically, and the dizziness would go away. So I'm like very much indebted to, to Sean for teaching me this. So I want to teach it to you. I want to show them first. This belt is going to come to the back of the head towards the occiput. So that occipital ridge, sort of a bony ridge at the back of your skull. It's not on the neck and it's not here above that. It's, it's really there at the base of the back of the skull. Okay, so that's a little word from your sponsor, your body. So you're going to come to lying on your back again, but this time you're going to take the belt around the ball of your right foot. So if you're confused where that is, it's right below your toes. That's the ball of your foot. And from there, you're going to begin to take this other part of the belt now to that occiput of the back of the skull. So if you do have a yoga belt, make sure you're not putting the metal part towards the back of the head. You don't want to pinch any of your hair or whatever. So there, you're going to bend the right knee, just as we've been doing a lot, to find that you can take this behind your head. Your head is going to be off of the floor. So as you're here, that might feel weird to begin. And I always start with my hands behind my head a few times just to release the head back towards the ground into the, the basket of my hands. And you may stay here or begin to play with extending the left leg long or begin to take your right leg a little bit longer as well so that you're just releasing the weight as much as you can of your head into the belt as you do your playing with kicking up through the ball of your right foot. So it's okay if your head is off of the floor here. You may need to adjust as I am the belt until you feel like, oh yeah, this is my spot where I can stay and breathe. So as you're lengthening your right leg, you continue to reach your right thigh towards the back of the right leg, so towards the hamstrings. So the front of the right thigh goes towards the back of the right thigh. And as you're reaching the right leg a little bit longer, with or without a bend into the knee, you're reaching up through the ball of your right foot to play with length. And then you can find just a few movements or releasing your head, your shoulders, as you continue those efforts. And maybe you'll fall asleep here. <laughs> maybe. Okay, and then to come out, start by unhooking your head, and take your knees into the chest. So if that was your variation, if you enjoyed that, you can take that now on the left side. If you're like, um, H-E double hockey sticks, no. Then you'll take your mat to the wall for what I informally like to call airport pose. Because when I went to India, I landed in Heathrow Airport and ended up with my legs at the wall because that's what happens when you go on a long flight. So find your spot. Hips will be towards the wall. You can certainly use that blanket again for your hips and your lower back or any pillow that might sweeten the deal for you. But you want to start with hips really close to the wall and then you're going to begin to take yourself with the legs one after another up into the sky. So that the heels are at the wall, toes are away. You may keep a little buoyancy through your knees so you're not like hyperextending them, but still you want that feeling of thigh bones dropping. And then your arms are really for you to explore here. It could be arms by your sides, arms over your head, and sort of cactus arms. A few sort of uh, shakes of your head might release the back of your head again. If you enjoyed that sensation of hands to the eyes, you may take that here, just letting it serve you. 
eyes are definitely eventually closed and you can just hang out and breathe. Notice when you get a little bit separated from your breath, whether it's a thought or whether it's just a memory or a fantasy that comes into your head and you just go, okay, I'm coming back to the task of breathing in this soft body I have here. This is a pose you could really potentially stay in for quite a long time. So if you're feeling that urge to stay, by all means do that. You can pause the video and, and stay as long as you'd like. If you're still being cradled by that belt, slowly unhook the belt from your head and release. If your legs are up the wall, slowly moving your hips away from the wall, rolling over to the side, to coming on up, to sit. And then we'll all be in a seated shape. So however, and whenever that is, we'll meet seated with a blanket or a pillow, that same old one that you've been sitting on and using. I feel very relaxed and I hope you do too. We're gonna finish with one more breath and it's called Bamari Pranayama. So you're gonna keep your eyes closed and you'll inhale through your nose and exhale, taking the back of the skull back and then see if you can begin to now inhale through the nose but as you exhale, you'll hum with lips closed. It looks like this. Continuing if you would love. Again, if this is a place where you would like to sit and take a longer meditation, you're always welcome. But when you are ready, making your way down into a shavasana, either with a block, or sorry, with a blanket underneath your head or a blanket underneath your knees. See if you can just Lengthen out your limbs, taking the space you need to relax. Find one last breath in through the nose, and one last breath out through the mouth.
targeting your Shavasana to scan the body. Any last places that might still be holding some of the effort of the day? Taking as many big exhales or sighs that you may need to release that. Thinking of the Bhavanam created that atmosphere. 